Hello and welcome to a short presentation on product stewardship and extended producer responsibility. My name is Jennifer Jarland. I'm a County Recycling Program Coordinator for Kane County, Illinois. I'm also a founding member of the Illinois Product Stewardship Council, a group working to promote extended producer responsibility and product stewardship in Illinois. You may have heard these terms before, or if not, you might know of some of the programs. For example, in Illinois, the Electronics Recycling and Reuse Act bans electronics from the landfill and requires manufacturers to administer take-back and recycling programs for their equipment at end of use. Let me start by explaining the terms Product Stewardship and Extended Producer Responsibility, or EPR, and talk about their effectiveness as a method for increasing recovery of hard-to-recycle items or hazardous materials. I'll provide an overview of national EPR laws and discuss the benefits and how legislation works. I'll cover the Illinois laws in more detail, both active and proposed, and finally I'll introduce you to the work of the Illinois Product Stewardship Council. First of all, what is product stewardship? What is extended producer responsibility? And how do they relate to one another? Well, product stewardship and EPR are both product-centered approaches to environmental protection that call on all those in the product life cycle – designers, manufacturers, retailers, users, and waste managers – to share responsibility and costs for reducing the adverse environmental impacts of products. The greatest responsibility, though, lies with the producers, who have the most ability to affect the life cycle environmental impacts of the product through product design and marketing. So what's the difference between these terms, then? Product stewardship can be either voluntary or required by law. It is the act of minimizing the health, safety, environmental, and social impacts of a product and its packaging throughout all life cycle stages in turn strengthening the local, regional, and national economy. Manufacturers have the greatest ability to minimize their products' adverse impacts, but other stakeholders, such as suppliers, retailers, and consumers, also play a role. Extended producer responsibility, on the other hand, is a mandatory type of product stewardship, a regulatory approach in which manufacturers take primary financial responsibility for the post-consumer, environmental, safety, and economic impacts of their products. When manufacturers are required, by law, to design, manufacture, and manage their products in environmentally responsible ways, the result will be products that are less toxic and less hazardous over the course of their life cycles. Additionally, local taxpayers and governments will be relieved of financial and operational burdens of materials collection and management. Here are the U.S. state EPR bills by the map. The turquoise-colored states have one law each. The green states have two. The yellow states, including Illinois, have three. The red states have four. Rhode Island has five. And California, Maine, and Vermont all have seven EPR laws each. Here are the numbers of laws by product type. This gives you a good idea of the sorts of materials that are addressed by product stewardship. Some of the main focus materials are fluorescent lights, mattresses, paint, batteries, mercury-containing devices, and electronics. There are also many states proposing carpet legislation right now, including Illinois. Other focus materials include pharmaceuticals and packaging. The main benefits of extended producer responsibility for local governments are that product stewardship programs reduce costs for local governments who manage programs for hazardous waste and other waste management programs. More recycling opportunities and less disposal helps counties to reach recycling goals set out in county solid waste plans as well as helping the state to meet its overall goals. EPR benefits manufacturers because by being at the table, being involved in the process, producers contribute and help design the stewardship plan and the program. EPR also offers incentives to help producers improve their environmental performance upstream through product design and downstream through application of the performance objectives in recovery and reclamation programs for their products. 
EPR benefits the public because it results in widespread creation of take-back recycling programs and drop-off locations for hard-to-recycle materials. It offers environmentally sound and cost-free disposal options for products at end of life. And it prevents pollution and recovers valuable resources for reuse or recycling. While there are many elements to the various EPR bills, here are some of the basic elements common to all of them. All manufacturers of the target material must register with the state agency, like the Illinois EPA. Manufacturers then put together a stakeholder group, or stewardship organization, that will manage the program for them. The stewardship organization writes a plan that will be approved, or not approved, by the agency. The plans include elements such as a description of covered products and funding mechanisms. The manufacturers, via the stewardship organization, fund the processors and recyclers who manage the product at end of life. Plans include performance goals, like improvement in rates of recycling and diversion in order to be compliant, like increasing the recyclability of the product and its packaging, and like incentivizing growth of secondary markets for products made from recycled material. Convenience standards describe how each consumer, including those in rural areas, will be provided reasonably easy opportunities in each county to manage their post-consumer material. Plans must also include reporting, audits, and education and outreach requirements, as well as penalties and fees. When the laws become active, take-back programs are created throughout the state. Much of the time, recycling program coordinators in local government manage these programs in partnership with processors and manufacturers. There are three existing EPR laws in place in Illinois. Auto switches have a $2 per switch incentive on their return. And the law requires removal of convenience light switches prior to crushing or shredding of equipment. The electronics law originally covered four major electronic items, home computers including laptops, monitors, televisions, and printers. The law was expanded to include all computer monitors, all peripherals to computers and TVs like keyboards, mice, scanners, etc., game consoles, music players, cell and desk phones, etc. Seventeen products in all are now banned from the landfill and must be recycled. Wholesalers must accept mercury thermostats for collection and the manufacturer must provide collection buckets for that purpose. Let's look at the proposed Illinois initiatives. The Illinois Paint Stewardship Act was first introduced in 2013 and then redrafted in 2014 to address issues around incineration of oil-based paint and it's hoped to pass in 2015. The Carpet Stewardship Act was drafted and introduced in 2014 by the Illinois Carpet Recycling Working Group. It will be reintroduced in 2015. The existing Electronics Recycling and Reuse Act has a mandatory assessment period written into it so that based on what we've learned over the last two active program years about what's working and what's not working, the law can be improved through amendments. Paint manufacturers are engaging proactively in the discussions on paint stewardship legislation, which is great. Illinois could gain financial benefits of up to 17 million annually on the collection and management of roughly 2.2 million gallons of leftover paint every year. The cost of those programs typically represents 50% of municipal household hazardous waste budgets. Based on the 2009 Illinois Commodity Waste Generation and Characterization Study, the amount of carpet discarded annually in Illinois could be as high as 560 million pounds. In response to this resource recovery issue, the Illinois Carpet Recycling Working Group was formed. I'm a co-chair of that group, so if you have any questions or would like to get involved, please reach out. The Carpet Recycling Working Group is dedicated to advancing carpet recycling in Illinois and is currently working to increase public drop-off collection locations for carpet and padding in the greater Chicago area. To date, there are over 10 public carpet recycling drop-off locations and several one-day recycling events in Kane and Will counties have included carpet. 
The Village of Oak Park is currently offering a pilot curbside carpet recycling program. The next two slides give you a look at the national activity around paint and carpet. Seven states have active paint laws. Colorado will be the eighth as it has passed and is awaiting the governor's signature. And Illinois is in the lineup for 2015. While California is currently the only state with an active carpet stewardship law, there are six other states that have proposed legislation in the last couple of years. Through collaboration with the National Product Stewardship Institute, many states have formed product stewardship councils. Product Stewardship Institute recognizes that local governments, along with certain companies, environmental groups, and other stakeholders, often share policy priorities and strategies to shape and promote both legislative and voluntary initiatives within a specific state. They also support local government groups and allies working to advance product stewardship in their state by providing a range of services beyond member and partner benefits. These services can include organizational coordination, like helping to establish a product stewardship council. They offer support, meeting facilitation, and technical assistance. They also provide access to a wealth of collaborative information and connect each state to the national network. The Illinois Product Stewardship Council, or ILPSC, formed officially in 2014. Though a core group of county agency and association stakeholders have been meeting and working on product stewardship regularly since 2012. Illinois current members include the State Environmental Protection Agency, over 15 counties, around 10 cities, several solid waste agencies, and the two state recycling and solid waste associations. The mission of ILPSC is to shift the product waste management system in Illinois from one focused on government-funded and ratepayer-financed waste diversion to one that relies on product responsibility, pro excuse me, producer responsibility, in order to reduce public costs, increase opportunities for waste minimization and resource recovery, to raise recycling rates, and to drive improvements in product design that promote environmental sustainability. As a significant consequence of this evolution, the green jobs sector will continue to grow, offering an increasing number of in-state recycling industry jobs. The Illinois Product Stewardship Council will work to integrate the principles of product stewardship into the policy and economic structures of Illinois, including the Illinois Solid Waste Management Plan. The objectives of ILPSC are to provide a forum for the exchange of ideas and information regarding existing and proposed EPR programs, to provide effective leadership on product stewardship initiatives in the region, to educate elected officials and other decision makers on the benefits of product stewardship, to coordinate, support, or participate in product stewardship initiatives locally, regionally, and nationally, and to develop and recommend product stewardship policies and educational tools to organizations, institutions, businesses, governments, state legislatures, and legislators. If you would like to get involved and be a part of the fulcrum product stewardship work being done in the state, please contact the Illinois chairperson or alternately you can contact the PSI chair for information or to find out how to join. If you want to learn more about this topic, visit these websites or feel free to contact me personally if you wish. Thank you so much for your time and interest in product stewardship and extended producer responsibility. And thank you for being a part of the solution.